Hi, welcome to Heart of Philly. And today we are we are at Springdale Farms with owner John Eber and Shireen Pavlidis, and she is um, a chef and also a recipe developer. So today we are going to do a little cooking, and John, we're going to buy our produce here. And I I was told how fresh it is by Shireen. <laughs> she she has shopped here before. So can you tell us you grow everything right here? Uh, everything that we can grow. We try to grow. Um, we do supplement uh, things that are out of season uh, for things that we don't have at that particular time, but everything we grow, we try to retail right here at our market. And Shireen, tell us about what we're going to do today. Here. Well, today we're going to go shopping. So we're going to go shopping for some butternut squash, and we're going to make a really simple, simple dish that people can make an easy side dish for Thanksgiving or any night of the week. This is your winter squash. It is a beautiful fruit and you should use it all winter long. Great. So now we're going to go shopping for the right squash. And John, thank you. Thank You're you. You're quite welcome. Because we're going to get a fresh one today. Oh, yeah. Okay. The freshest. Smell the bacon. Wine. Oh, it smells so good. Yummy. I think I see it. I think we're going in the right direction. We are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Squash, acorn squash, butternut squash. Okay. Now, so this is the butternut squash. How can you tell the right one um, to purchase with uh, regarding uh, freshness? How can you really tell? Well, I tell this to my kids who come grocery shopping with me. If it doesn't look like it's been in a fight, <laughs> it's the right produce. Okay, hey, they look so pretty good. <laughs> they look good. You don't want any blemishes. You don't want any indentations. You it shouldn't look like it's in a fight. It should okay. look beautiful. And this is perfection. It's beautiful. This one's beautiful. This is a really, really big one. So we actually need a three pound butternut squash for this recipe, which will serve about four people. Okay. okay. So we'll weigh this one and see. We're going to we weigh have. this one. This one to me, I'm going to say, is definitely probably four. So that one's about two. And, and it should also feel nice, nice for its Let's size. See. Hey, you could actually do um, this one. I bet you this is the guy for us. This is probably a three pounder. What, you want to lift weights with it? Yeah, you could <laughs> kind of like work out with these two. Sure, sure can. Or you okay. could use it as a weapon. Oh, this would be a good weapon, right? <laughs> All right, let's okay. take these two to the scale. But okay. I'm going to say this is probably our guy. Okay. okay. All right. Let's see if I'm right. Because now. You know, I gotta see if I'm right or not. This is probably four. Oh, I'm close. Oh, you're really close. Just over. Right. Okay. I think this is it. That's it. You're Perfect. right. You're right. Okay, so this is about three and a quarter. By the time we trim it, it's exactly what we want. And this is the size that you want to purchase to eat any night of the week with your dinner. And it's a really simple preparation. So let's oh, go buy great. this. Great. Nutrition wise, butternut squash. It's um, obviously very nutritious. It's a fruit, oddly yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, vitamin A, C, E, potassium, fiber, and most importantly, it's sweet and nutty and absolutely delicious. Oh. And they, have, they look like they have a nice variety of everything, too. Well, I'm okay. a recipe developer. Mm -hmm. I work for a company called the Culinary Palette where I develop recipes for national food companies. So a lot of these uh, recipes are featured uh, in newspapers, publications, their websites. Um, I've worked on the set of Cake Boss, where I've uh, decorated cakes and, and worked in the bakery for uh, the bakery and on set. So that was interesting because I'm more culinary. So. For me, that was something new for me to learn, and mm -hmm. um, I recently actually featured a cake on Bravo. Bravo had a show called, um, and is still still running, is um, Thicker Than Water, the Merinos. So I presented this cake. It was a birthday cake uh, to Colette. She is um, one of uh, the many siblings that are featured on this show. Awesome show, very theatrical, very tight family knit, but that was fun. I saw a picture of that cake, and I'll tell you, I would have you make a cake for me. I, Aww, that was beautiful. Thanks, thanks. That was something that, it, if I was going to get married, <laughs> I would come to you for something like thanks. that. That was a beautiful cake. It was well, that's beautiful. Not totally, that's not really my niche. Food's right. my niche. Right. Fresh, easy, minimally prepared. Mm -hmm. That's sort of my niche and my love and my passion. 
and uh, doing that cake was just a little something extra to have under my belt that you know, it's always good to know a little bit more so that was really really fun and um, so today I'm going to do something light, simple, fresh, minimally prepared, five ingredients. I can't believe that because I know myself when I'm cooking sometimes recipes are very involved mm -hmm. and when you have a busy lifestyle you need something that's quick especially if you're a working mom I'm, and I'm a working mom yeah, I'm a too. chef and a mom yeah and 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 for me if I'm stressed out at home forget it I'm not gonna do it right so I don't want to be stressed out but the truth of the matter is this is a beautiful product why overcomplicate it? Keep it simple. So five ingredients is all we're going to do. Thanksgiving is coming up. Yes, However, yes. this is a great side dish for Thanksgiving. It's to take off the stress from everything else that you're doing. But the beauty is you can do this any night of the week. So this dish is going to be a ginger honey glazed roasted butternut squash. So it's really quick, really easy. We're going to get it together. So I'm going to show you when we're in the grocery mm -hmm. store. I, sh I showed you how to, to purchase it, right? right? Well, now we're going to break it down. This looks like it, this skin is thick. It so is So is thick. it a lot to get through? It's or? really, really thick, and it's very similar to pumpkin. In okay. fact, you'll see, once I start cutting it open, it'll smell like a pumpkin. And you have this oh. beautiful oh. orange flesh, mm -hmm. and it smells. Let me see. It smells like pumpkin. Yes, it does. Yep, mm -hmm. it's pretty very inter interchangeable with pumpkin. Um, the, the world, the endless recipes that you can prepare with butternut squash. You could do lasagna, you could do ravioli, you could do a, a, a curry butternut squash bisque. I do that a lot. Mm. And really, the choices are endless. But we are going to keep it super simple today. We're just going to roast it with a few ingredients. So we're going to let the the uh, squash be the star. So I'll just cut this in half. So you need a little elbow grease. So the best thing you want to do is use a serrated knife. Okay. Nice, nice sharp one. Your serrated knives, you use them for breads, tomatoes, um, cutting your butternut squash, watermelon, any melon. Is it um, because you have a little more control as you're cutting you something? You do. You can really grip and get in there. If, if, okay. if, I, if I told you the two best knives to have in your kitchen would be your serrated and your chef's knife. They're mandatory. Now, a lot of people will tell you to peel the butternut squash. As you can see, this is super, super hard. It's crazy hard and difficult to peel. We're not going to peel it. We're just going to take our serrated knife and just see how I have a flat right. edge. That's yes. what you want so it doesn't slip away from you. And then we're just gonna nice and tightly just cut it. So we're just shaving it right off. And you see, we're not losing much, but if you used a peeler, you have a better shot of hurting yourself and getting cut. Shockingly enough, that peeler is sharp than, than doing it this way. And see it, how easy? Yeah, and it seems as though a peeler wouldn't be enough really to it get through It isn't that. enough. You mm -hmm. know, see how quick right, I did that? that's great. Well, you'd be right. here three times as long doing a peeler. So all we're gonna do is go through and peel it all up, all the uh, tough skin, get rid of it, and then we're just gonna dice it into one to one and a half inch cubes. We're gonna get rid of the seeds, and the seeds are just like pumpkin seeds. Right. So this is how we remove the seeds. So like I said, just like a pumpkin, you could keep these, you could roast these seeds, put a little little oil on there, some salt, and you can eat them, absolutely. What type of oil would you use? I like to, it all depends on what I'm cooking. But here we're gonna use canola oil because it has a high smoke point, neutral flavor. And really what I want from it is neutral flavor. I want the honey in this dish to shine through. And I don't want you to taste oil. I just wanna use it so it, does it, so it helps the honey not to burn when okay. it's roasting. And then we're just going to peel it out just like that. So just get in there. And really important to clean it, you know, just keep it nice and clean. Just sure to shave it. And you get it all out. You can go through, take the seeds, you can eat them. And sometimes people even say you could eat the skin is edible. But mm. I say, I say <laughs> don't even bother. Now, if you were to roast the seeds, you would... Um... Just pop them on a sheet tray. Okay. Add, a, add just a little, a little salt, oil and salt, salt. A little oil, okay. salt, pepper. And how long would you roast them for? About? You could roast them 350. I wouldn't do them really high. You just want to dry them out. Okay. 
and uh, not long. You just keep an eye on it, about 10, 15 minutes. Now, once you get to this point, piece of cake, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll just dice it, voila, that's it. So you have a nice, beautiful, bright orange color. Now, all we want to do is really simple. So I like to combine canola oil with the honey. And the reason why I do that is that way it's easily, it's easier for us to pour. So we have a New Jersey honey, which is really amazing. Mm. I have to say, I'm a little in love with honey. It's not just for tea. It's healthy for you too, It's isn't very it? healthy and it's, it's natural. Right. And it gives a nice sweetness with a little floral flavor, but most importantly, it's gonna candy the squash. It's gonna literally make it like little pieces of candy. So all we're gonna do is just pour it. Just see how it's nice and pliable now? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna make it easier for us to get it onto our sheet tray and onto the butternut squash. Then we're gonna just season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. So, you know, give it a nice dash. You don't have to go crazy, but what this is gonna do is the salt is gonna bring out the honey flavor, it's gonna bring out the moisture, and it's gonna flavor is this, the um, butternut sea salt. This is kosher salt. Oh, okay. okay. I like to use kosher salt because it's it's a bigger granule. Okay. I feel I can control salting and seasoning, but I'm seasoning better, and it's dry versus sea salt, which is harvested from the sea, has a wet, wet feel to it. So freshly cracked black pepper. So you wanna season this really, really nice. Okay, and our next two ingredients. The surprise. Are, yeah, <laughs> it's, just, it's just ground ginger. So we'll just give it a nice mm. sort of aromatic flavor, just a little, hmm, what is that? So you have a little bit of ginger, and you get a little back heat for some, from some cayenne. I thought that that's yeah, what that was. Yeah, just a little was. cayenne. It's okay. So that way, you know, it's, it's a, I call it the sneak heat. It sort of sneaks okay. up on you in the back of your in the back of your throat. And that's it. That's it. That's, that's all. That's it. Five ingredients. Oh my gosh. We're gonna toss it with okay. our hands. Okay. And then that way everything is nice and evenly coated. But see how it's like candy. Oh, that's you know what. It smells you can good, smell right? smell everything. It smells good together, the yeah, combination. I think, I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, it's Thanksgiving, cinnamon, nutmeg. Everybody does that, right? Right. Let's just do a little variety, a little variation. Now, can you make this, you said you can make it ahead of time? You can make it, can you make it a couple days ahead you, of time? Well, you or? could chop up your butternut squash. And then mix all the ingredients together. Absolutely, okay. which you could say, it just took us just a few yeah. minutes to do that. But now they're nice and evenly coated, 400 degree oven okay. for 40 minutes. So we're gonna toss it halfway through so that way it doesn't burn on the underside. And what's gonna happen is all the moisture, the natural moisture of the butternut squash is gonna release. Mm -hmm. And then it's gonna soak back up and evaporate. And then that honey is just gonna caramelize and become like a sweet candy once it comes out. So about 40 minutes and we're just gonna check it halfway through. All right, now we get to taste. Ah, oh, this looks so, so good. Now the best thing you want to do is just let it rest about five minutes. And okay. what the, and from what, the oven. Then from let the it oven. Rest. Okay. Place it in your serving bowl. Let it rest five minutes because that way it gives the honey a chance to sort of harden up just a little bit, mm. and it gives it a little candy flavor. So okay, let's taste it. Dig in. Let's dig in. Mmm. It has a little sweetness, right? I but know. it's not. It doesn't hit you over your head. No. Oh, and you could taste all the flavors that. A little cayenne, a little back heat, but it's not that punching is great. you. That's great. Oh, I love it. It's simple, it's delicious, it's nutty, it's sweet. I want more. Now, you could I do this any it. night of the week. Mm -hmm. Chicken, pork tenderloin, doesn't just have to be for Thanksgiving anymore. And I'm going to feature this recipe on my, I'm just starting a blog, Tweet and Eats. And you can find it on my Facebook page at tweet hyphen n hyphen eats. <laughs> at tweet hyphen n eats on my Facebook page and on Twitter. Well, I'll feature the recipe. This is absolutely delicious. And Thank you. You know what? I, I would love to have this. Like you said, you can have it with um, other meals. It doesn't have to be any, turkey. Any night yeah. of the week. Grilled chicken, you could pair it with a steak, a pork tenderloin. And it's so healthy. And it's so healthy and it's easy and it's delicious. It's wonderful. I love
love you, heart of Billy. Mwah.